Now that we've looked at the traditional buy-side institutions, let's look at the non-traditional ones. As we discussed in the initial buy-side overview before stepping into the traditional buy-side, we highlighted the importance of understanding that both traditional and non-traditional institutions have the same goal to earn returns for investors in exchange for fees. Now that we have learned about the traditional firms, the best way to understand our non-traditional firms is to contrast their differences. To start, here are some examples of non-traditional asset managers. There are hedge funds, distressed funds, venture capital funds, as well as private equity firms. And again, family offices can be either traditional or non-traditional, and it is very dependent on who is running the shop. The investors that give these firms money to work with have very different risk appetites and objectives when it comes to the risk-return ratio and time horizon of their investment. The types of investors that are able to participate in hedge funds as well as other buy-side non-traditional funds are called accredited investors. A formal definition of an accredited investor will differ from one jurisdiction to another, but it will generally be an individual or a couple that has net assets of $5 million or more, an individual or a couple that has a high before-tax income for consecutive years, or a person registered under jurisdictional legislation as a dealer or advisor. In layman's terms, accredited investors are people who put money in and expect to get more out, but are okay with the considerable risks associated with this and a very real potential of getting less. They are financially educated individuals or institutions that are acutely aware of the risks that an institution like a hedge fund takes on. Overall, an accredited individual is a person or institution that not only has the financial means to withstand substantial losses, but moreover, someone who is acutely aware of this. One of the key differentiating factors between traditional and non-traditional buy-side firms is the amount of leverage that the firm can employ. This is because non-traditional funds typically have three characteristics and behaviors that are noticeably different from their traditional peers. Non-traditional funds are, one, actively managed in the sense that they are aiming to be profitable regardless of prevailing market conditions, two, unregulated, or at the very least, by comparison, very unregulated, and three, limited in their investor base, in that only accredited investors can participate, and if a hedge fund is looking for investors, they primarily target a limited amount of institutional investors. This is not just limited to hedge funds, but I use hedge funds as an example because it is oftentimes the most spoken about type of firm when we look at non-traditional firms. These are the points, and if you're interested in learning more about non-traditional asset managers, specifically hedge funds, we have a course dedicated to this in our CMSA program. Grasping a clear understanding of the difference between a traditional and non-traditional asset manager is not easy, so let me give you a few further examples. First, let's take for example a traditional firm like a pension fund and compare it to a non-traditional buy-side firm like a hedge fund. Imagine a pension fund that is responsible for providing the income of retired teachers as they complete their years of service for educating our future workforce. These pension funds are not going to take on large amounts of risk for large amounts of rewards, but rather take on a much more cautious approach. These funds are going to invest in government securities alongside other very highly rated AAA securities. They are absolutely not comfortable with the concept of losing large amounts of money. Next, I'm sure the introduction of venture capital and private equity was a bit confusing, but perhaps you could not pinpoint exactly why. It's because these two types of roles do not put people in direct market-facing positions, and they do not work with securities every single day. Instead, private equity funds will pool together accredited investor capital and take on material interest in companies and focus on achieving returns for their investors through altering the company's capital structure, optimizing operational performance, and overall managing the business that they now partially own. 
Venture capital, often known as VC, funds are in a similar but different position as they fund budding companies in various stages and help grow the business to realize gains when the VC sells its stake at a future date. So you can see that there is a contrast in the means by which private equity and venture capital funds earn returns for their investors. Hedge funds tend to focus on larger public companies and take smaller stakes in the form of buying and selling small amounts of shares. Their share ownership would rarely take on significant ownership status. This is sometimes referred to as a passive stake, while PE and VC funds will often do the opposite. Now, something that is always atop of everyone's minds is the career progression path. The career path in terms of titles is not as straightforward and standardized on the buy side as it is on the sell side, because on the sell side, there is really just investment bank, whereas on the buy side, as you have seen now, there is a broader array of institutions. So I'm going to highlight some progressions that are commonly seen in the buy side groups. However, do note that there is some variety. Hedge funds and distressed funds typically follow the investment analyst to portfolio manager path. There are a few seniors and juniors here and there, but at most hedge funds, you'll typically see an investment analyst, and the next and final step is portfolio manager. Distressed funds are non-traditional buy-side institutions that invest in debt or a company generally that is in a distressed financial situation. They are oftentimes a group within a broader fund, and their title progression is typically from an investment analyst through to a managing director. Venture capital and private equity have a slightly different route that is most commonly seen. You will typically see an investment analyst work their way up to partner status. There are some key characteristics that differentiate and define non-traditional versus traditional buy-side institutions. Now I'm going to give you a peek into our hedge funds course with this table that succinctly juxtaposes the key points. Regulation, fees, leverage, performance management, market exposure, and correlation to traditional markets. All of these are the most pivotal points that characterize non-traditional and traditional firms. On the non-traditional side, there is a minimal amount of regulation and fees are highly incentivized as it is a requirement and not an option for portfolio managers at non-traditional firms to have a material amount of their own personal wealth invested into the fund. The leverage is typically high on a standalone basis and the fund's returns are judged on an absolute basis. Non-traditional funds will also go long short both fixed income and equity and all these attributes together lead to a low correlation with traditional markets. On the other hand, the traditional firms are extensively regulated, and fees are a function of the assets under management, often called AUM. The amount of leverage is low, and fund performance is always judged versus a market benchmark. These firms typically only go long, and all of these attributes together make for an institution that is highly correlated with traditional markets. Now let's turn to a day in the life of a non-traditional buy-side portfolio manager or investment analyst. Here we are going to focus on hedge fund roles as our CMSA program focuses on roles that are active capital markets participants. So that means folks that are either directly facing markets like portfolio managers, salespeople and traders, or are exposed to securities on a daily basis like folks in origination, DCM and ECM, or research. A hedge fund manager's lifestyle is not much different than a buy-side fund manager. When it comes to the daily activities that they perform, they do the same three core activities. Gather and analyze data to inform views, monitor current active positions, and execute trades and rebalance positions. However, something that does tend to differ is the person behind the desk. And by this, I mean the individual's personality and style of work. A hedge fund tends to attract individuals that are excited and energized by the idea of taking on risk and love to operate in environments with little oversight, regulation, or bureaucracy. They tend to have very independent schools of thought and are unafraid to be different. 
and this perspective is reflected even in the hedge fund's legal structure. A hedge fund manager or analyst will start their days nice and early, sometime generally between when salespeople get to their desks and traditional asset managers get to theirs. At a hedge fund, the day will look strikingly similar to that of a traditional buy-side manager, but with generally less people and less bureaucracy. For example, during earnings season, there may be multiple meetings in a day. However, with the size of most hedge funds, you will be in close enough proximity to your colleagues that you will be able to discuss things all together all day without breaking out into a separate meeting room. In fact, there may not even be one. In essence, a hedge fund is a traditional fund stripped of its regulation and hierarchies as well as the safety net of guaranteed income. A saying that you will often hear with regards to income at a hedge fund will be, you eat what you kill, which is a way of saying your income is incredibly dependent on your annual performance. Do well, and your compensation will reflect such performance. Do poorly, and you may get very close to nil. This is something that does not happen at a traditional money manager. With all this together, it is not surprising to see a wide range of working hour windows and weeks, as the hedge fund industry is one in which the world can truly be your oyster. Congratulations! You have made it to the finish line of this course. I hope that this course has given you a well-informed view of the sell side and primary markets, as well as the buy side and secondary markets. By learning about key roles in each of these areas, I hope that you have been able to get a greater understanding of what individuals in these industries do, what it takes to succeed, and where you might find your best fit. Our CMSA program is a carefully curated set of courses that are designed to serve you at various levels of your career journey. Whether you're just graduating and looking to break into finance, or you're an experienced professional looking to pivot, our CMSA program will give you the knowledge you need to confidently pursue your next career move. So join us and explore the opportunities available to you, knowing that we have done the hard work of filtering out the fluff and serving you just the information that you need and nothing more. Whether it is starting a new career out of education or laterally shifting as you find your best career fit, it is always an exciting time when you are seeking change. I hope that our course here at CFI has given you more than food for thought and that it has empowered and motivated you today.